welcome to this episode of Video Drone and this old man's FPV club. So I've got the Wakir out here at the field where I can do a little bit better testing of it. I got a little bit more breeze than I would like, but I'm kind of anxious to get some flying, so I don't know how this is really going to work out. I've got the ground station over here set up recording video, and I got telemetry on here. So I've got 14 satellites on this thing, so I'm all set for, for GPS. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, arm the copter and then I'm going to take it up. And I'm going to throw it in GPS mode. Whoops. There, whenever it switches to GPS mode it does that weird kind of shakiness. And I'm going to have to take my glasses off, my reading glasses. So I can actually see this thing line of sight. But uh, now that we got this, I'm going to do a punch up. That's a full punch up. And its responsiveness is quite a bit different than, than uh, most quads. I'm kind of watching the FPV screen. So one of the things it does what it does like to do is it does seem to want to climb as it's uh, going forward. And again, I've got a pretty good sized wind out here today, so it's really it's really uh, picking up on the whole wind situation and causing a lot of lift. And so again, I'm just flying in circles. And so I want to get some time under my belt flying this thing out here where I can actually recover it if something happens before I fly it over the water because this is quite a bit different animal than, uh, you know, if you're used to flying a Phantom or a Spark or something like that, you know, or, or an Up Air. This is really quite a bit different. Uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, again, I played around with the Seamus for a while, but it's been a long time. I think like the SEMA X5 is probably a good trainer for this, and I have one, and I've I've flown it. Um, you know, last year I tried to, you know, at lunchtime when I was working from home, you know, get in a half hour, a day or so, just to get the hand-eye coordination down, because that's really, really what this takes is a lot of hand-eye coordination. And again, I'm just kind of flying this around a little bit in circles. Let's do a circle this way. I like the head. I like the headlights for understanding its orientation, and notice it climbing. So I want to bring this back down. I want to spiral it back down. I think I. I, I want to bring it back this way. I'm having a little bit hard time seeing it. I want to bring it down. It likes to go up more than it does down, which is probably a good thing because I'm sticking it. That's almost a full down stick. And it's, it's coming down pretty slow. I want to let it sit there a minute. I want to check the uh, FPV and give my eyes a little bit of rest. So the FPV actually looks pretty good. So I've got the uh, mushroom antenna and I've got the panel antenna. I'm not doing anything too uh, crazy. I do have recording going, so you're seeing what the camera's seeing out there on the copter. And again, uh, it's got telemetry. Without my glasses, I really can't see it. But it, it's holding pretty good out there with regards to just staying there versus my test the other day. Um, and, and again, it's still even a bit windy and it's just really holding. And again, that's why I sort of call this the old man's FPV because I tell you what, I mean, I just don't have the hand-eye coordination anymore like Mr. Steel or Sharpoo or any of those other guys. Um, you know, so I get sort of the enjoyment with the computer-aided assist. You know, one of the things I'm really kind of surprised is why can't this do automated flips, you know, sort of like the SEMAs do and, and a lot of the other cheaper quads. I know it just turns the motor off and flips it. But I wonder why you couldn't have a flip button in something like this out of curiosity. Uh, so let's go ahead. But the the one thing is that I'm having a hard time with is is the throttle, adjusting the throttle, managing the throttle. Uh, 
I tell you, what, I, it's kind of sunny out here today. I have got to get sunglasses on. I guess that's okay. Because when I'm flying the Spark or whatever, which I was just in a previous video, uh, again, I have to be able to look at the screen. I need reading glasses to see the screen. So I want to see... I want to see how... Kind of look. I'm not sure where my battery indicator is on here, or if it's showing it, because this screen is typically a little bit smaller than the the o, uh, OSD screen. But it hit, man, see it hits that wind. Look at this baby angle of attack. Yeah, you know, and I know a lot of you probably will. Uh, write me in there saying, you know, I need to take it out of GPS mode for better performance. And I tell you what, I want to learn how to fly this a little bit more before I just go take it out of GPS mode in, in Addy mode, because uh, I just paid 300 bucks for this and I don't want to lose it. But but see, I'm really down sticking this thing, and this thing is really, you know, it really doesn't want to come down, especially when it's in forward motion. It gets a lot of lift in forward motion. So we're bringing it right back towards us at a pretty high rate of speed. And I have no idea what the hell I'm doing. I'm just trying not to run it into anything. That's why I, li I like it out here. I mean, it's a pretty open area I have. I've got a couple baseball fields of area. And uh, so I can I can do a lot of stuff. Now notice this I'm climbing even though I'm I'm down sticking because of the forward motion. So that's the one thing that that I'm having a little bit of a hard time adjusting to. When I fly the Spark in Sport mode, um, you know it holds its it roughly holds its altitude. And what I'm really afraid of is this going down, and, and it's because I really didn't intend it to go down over there, and I'm not intending it to go up. Uh, I think, I, I wonder if there is a setting. Now, the instructions aren't too... I wonder what that switch setting does, if anything. The instructions aren't too, too good on this thing, as far as... Uh, it basically shows you how to get it in the air, and that's pretty much about it. But I tell you what, this is a lot of fun, especially, I think, once I get kind of used to it. The altitude rising is, is what I'm really having a hard time with because, you know, as you see, I'm starting out about this altitude, then I'm flying it around, and then it's, it's rising in altitude. Because it, de it definitely picks up lift. And that, that's one of the things where a lot of quadcopters, if they're flying forward, they use less battery power because they're picking up lift, sort of like an auto gyro situation, I think. So if there's any aerodynamic engineers out there that want to elaborate down below, I'd be interested in hearing if that's the case or not, or if I'm just hallucinating. But but see, I'm not I'm not doing any up stick. And notice it climbed. Once it once it went into the breeze, it really just lifted up. And Now that's hold mode, and that's rising. I have no idea what that just did. I'm just arbitrarily pushing switches on here and seeing what happens. Well, it's, I'm thinking it's probably getting pretty, pretty down there on battery, so I'm going to bring this back in and land this. But I tell you what, super smooth flyer. I mean, a lot of fun, too. Okay, I don't want to land over there. I want to come over here. Now, see, see it's, it's being, it's being uh, caught up in the wind a little bit. Now, I don't want to land there. Look, look, look at it's jerking as I move. Okay, we want to land it. Whoa, we don't want to land it there. 
Okay, we want to shut. Okay. Grass is a little bit high, so we had to cut a little grass. It got, got one of the propellers caught underneath the mat. It drifted off there a little bit, but she's okay. Um, one of the things, too, actually a little tip I caught from Quadcopter 101. Don't turn the transmitter off until you unplug the battery. That way, if it attempts a return to home, which this does have return to home ability, uh, that's not going to happen. So anyways, another really good flight. I just got to practice the landings and uh, get a few more flight things under my belt with regards to this. But I tell you what, folks, uh, if you're looking for some FPV fun uh, and you don't want to get into the whole deep FPV scene and don't have uh, hand-eye coordination like this old guy does, uh, I really think this has so far really been a good bet. I've had a lot of fun flying it. Um, you know, it can get aggressive when it needs to within the realms of, you know, being an old man's flyer. Uh, it does a good job. It also looks damn cool, so I'm really impressed with that. So, hey, let me know what you're thinking about for lunch. Subscribe button's going to be coming up over there. You know the drill. Hit me up in the comments, and we'll see you again when we go fly this thing.